Hey guys, more Blakey here and welcome back to another tutorial. So we've covered 2D player movement, but we are yet to cover top-down movement, a popular form of movement often seen in games such as Zelda and even 2.5D games such as Hades. C Sharp has a pretty easy and expandable method to implement this and today I'm going to walk you through it. Let's get started. But before we do get started make sure to subscribe and like the video as always. As you can see in this scene all I've got is a player here. I've got a background, I've got a main camera that has a little camera movement script that we did in another video and I've got some fancy little lights just to spice up the scene just a little bit. And as you can see if I click play here I'm pressing my arrow keys but nothing is actually happening because we don't have any movement set and we are going to fix that now. What I'm going to do, I'm going to make a new script. I'm just going to call it movement and I'm going to double click on that script to open it. Firstly, I'm going to go to the top here and I'm going to assign some simple variables. So I'm just going to go private, rigid body, 2D. I'm going to call that RB. So first we need to get an access to our rigid body because that is how we're going to be moving in this video. And I'm going to assign that in the start function with rb equals get component as you can see it there rigid body 2d and don't forget these two little brackets as well and also don't forget that it is 2d next i'm going to grab two floats for our horizontal and vertical movement so i'm just going to go float vertical and float horizontal now the reason we don't put public before these is because these floats do not need to be public as we don't need to see them in the inspector as we're going to be assigning them in a minute and they're not going to change now if we go into our update function remember update is called once per frame as it says right there so it's called basically the whole time you're playing the game and we're just going to write horizontal equals input dot get axis raw and then we're going to use Unity's inbuilt word, which is horizontal with a capital H. Don't forget that. And then we just do the exact same for our vertical movement. So we just put vertical equals input dot get axis raw vertical. And this also has to be with a capital V. What we're essentially doing here is assigning these floats to an inbuilt function known as input dot get axis raw, which is basically Unity's input system. And we're assigning the horizontal to our left and right movement and the vertical to our up and down movement. But if we press play right now in Unity, nothing would actually happen because we haven't actually assigned the velocity of the rigid body to anything. All we've done is assign these floats, which is not enough. What we need to do now is go down and type in RB. So we're referencing our rigid body. I'm gonna do RB.velocity. So we're getting the velocity of our rigid body. I'm gonna make a new vector too. I'm gonna to grab our horizontal and we're gonna multiply that by a brand new float that I'm gonna add at the top here. I'm gonna go public float and I'm just going to call this move speed so now I'm going to multiply this horizontal by this move speed and then for our y axis I'm just going to multiply our vertical by our move speed and we've got a script here I'm just going to drag it onto my player now if I scroll down here I've got a little move speed float and I'm just going to set this to something like five now if you haven't already your player is going to need a rigid body and that rigid body is going to need a gravity scale of zero and if it's not set to zero this is what happens yeah, he's, he's going to drop. He's going to drop. And we don't want that. So if you make sure that float is set to zero in our inspector, and we've got a number set for our move speed, which isn't zero, we can go ahead and press play. And if you move WASD, you can see we're actually moving around here, which is exactly what we want. But we do have one issue, and you may have noticed it if you've been using this. If I go left, it's fine. If I go up, it's fine. But if I combine them, we move pretty fast, and that is not something that we want. To fix this, we need to add a limit to our speed when both the horizontal and vertical floats are bigger than zero. So we're gonna do exactly that. I'm gonna add a float and I'm gonna call it speed limit. And I'm gonna set that to something like 0 0.5. And when you're using floats, you need to add an F at the end, otherwise it will register as an in and that will give you an error. Now, if we go in our update function here, we're gonna check for something. So we're gonna do if our horizontal speed is not equal to zero and our vertical speed is also not equal to zero. We're going to set our horizontal float and we're going to multiply it by our new speed limit. And we're also going to do the same for our vertical. So we're going to multiply that by our speed limit. What this is essentially going to do is when we are moving diagonally, we're going to times both our horizontal and vertical speed by 0 0.5, which is going to slow it down. And the reason I made this float public is so we can adjust this in the inspector if we feel we're moving too slowly or too fast when we're moving diagonally now. But this is the easiest way to limit the diagonal speed issue. So if I go into Unity and you can see we've got a new speed limit float down here. I'm going to set this to 0.6. And now you can see when I move diagonally, we are just that little bit slower and we don't have that issue anymore. You might feel that it feels a little bit slow, 
So now we can adjust this very quickly in the inspector to say 0 0.7. And now it feels almost perfect. One issue I did want to talk about that you might run into is that if your computer is lagging, for example, your player might also be lagging at the same speed of your computer. And the reason we did that is because the input we have put into our update function. And to eliminate that, we're going to use a different function known as fixed update, which doesn't run every frame, which realistically is what you should be putting your physics updates in. And then input update should be in update because they run every frame and you want to make sure if a player presses a key, it's always registered. So we're going to go below our void update here and we're just going to type in fixed update. We can get rid of the private here. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to drag from this code. So we're going to drag our RB input and we're going to drag our if statement. I'm just going to copy that. I'm going to get rid of it from our update and I'm going to put it in our fixed update instead. We're checking for input here in our update every frame and we're actually updating our player's physics in our fixed update here. So if you did happen to have that issue or run into it at a later date, you will no longer. But guys, as you can see, we officially have a top down movement system, which fixes the diagonal issue and a potential input issue you could run into later down the line. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Let me know what tutorial you want to see next. And I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.